psychyogi.org. A very short introduction to stress. Well, firstly, what is stress? According to Lazarus and Falkman, 1984, stress is a pattern of negative physiological states and psychological responses occurring in situations where people perceive threats to their well-being, which they may not be able to meet. One of the most important things to note here is that it says physiological and psychological. According to evolutionary psychologists, stress is an atavistic response, meaning it was developed sometime in our evolution. The perceived threat is known as a stressor. So let's look at an example of a stressor. Imagine you are in the Australian outback, near a swamp, when suddenly you feel a presence behind you. So you turn around and there, low to the ground, is a crocodile looking at you with eager eyes. Almost immediately upon seeing that crocodile, you would have had a physiological response. And you would now be in a state of hyper-alertness, which evolutionary psychologists have called our fight-or-flight response, in which we quickly make a decision to either fight or run away. And it is this response which is arguably to blame for stress. As mentioned earlier, it is an atavistic response, which is stuck around, and in the modern world we can become stressed from more than one immediate threat. We can become stressed from things that aren't even present. We can become stressed from things that have no real perceived threat. Receiving a phone call, having to do a talk in front of a large crowd. When you encounter a stressor, several things happen physiologically. Increased heart rate and blood pressure, the release of cortisol and epinephrine. Epinephrine is more commonly referred to as adrenaline. If you've studied the 2006 remake of the Stanford Prison Experiment by Reiter and Haslam, you will know that cortisol was something that was tested for in order to work out if the prisoners were stressed. If cortisol was present in their saliva, then they were stressed. Your digestion stops, your breathing increases, your pupils dilate, your hair stand on end, which again is another link to stress being an atavistic response because we no longer are covered in hair. We do, we are covered in hair, but not visible hair that's easily visible at least. Galvanic skin response, which is the skin's conductivity, which is arguably due to um, more sweat because you're heating up because of the increased um, heart rate. On top of the physiological responses, there are a number of psychological responses. Firstly, short-term responses, which can include insomnia, depression, and anger. Of course, anger is one of the key things with stress. If you've ever seen any videos on YouTube of people getting angry at work because of stress, you'll know that. And the potential long-term effects include lowered immunity to diseases, so people who are stressed tend to be more ill than other people. Um, people who get stressed more are also highly at risk of coronary, coronary heart disease and depression again comes into long term effects if you've enjoyed this Psych Yogi presentation why not subscribe to keep up with all the latest videos